Hi, this is David. In this video, I'm going to talk about GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions are things that you want to execute in response to things that happen. So those things that happen are referred to as triggers. And that can be maybe checking code into a repository, creating an issue, uh, or just clicking a button. Uh, and those things that happen, they are subdivided into jobs, and within each job there are steps. Of course, there's more configuration that you could do to that, but um, I'll show you in an example. We'll make that more clear. Right now, I've opened the repository that I created in the last video, and you'll notice that across the top here, there's a tab called Actions. If I click on that, it brings up this right here, and there are a bunch of templates to get you started creating actions, and they're categorized by deployment, security, continuous integration, automation. So if you know you want to do something involving continuous integration, you can select one of these, click view all to expand it and show all of them. Notice that some of them were created by um, the community and or by companies. Some were created actually by GitHub. I am going to search for one called simple workflow right here. So I just search for the word simple and there it is right here. This one is created by GitHub and I click on configure and it brings up this text file here. It's a starter file that uh, uses, it's in, in a format called YAML. YAML stands for yet another markup language. I'm not gonna show you all the things that uh, that go into YAML, but some of the basics are if you start something with a the, this pound sign, that's a comment. It's totally ignored. It's just for documentation purposes. I'll get rid of that one here. Um, you also notice there are name value pairs. This name happens to be name, and there's the value is CI. I'll, I'll change that. So the name of this will be uh, GCAST simple workflow. Um, Here's where the triggers are, and you notice that you can trigger it from, there's multiple triggers here, so I can push to a branch, I can pull, create a pull request on a branch. I'm going to keep this really simple by getting rid of that. I really want this one right here, workflow underscore dispatch. What that means is that I can manually trigger it just by clicking a button. See, the comment above tells me that right here, so that's kind of nice. Down here are jobs, and with each job, there's a job called build, and um, that build has some steps and the steps has uh, each step has a name and an action to execute and notice that the indentation is important here so we know that these steps are part of this build job which is part of the jobs we know that because of the indentation because build is indented two spaces more than jobs is and steps is indented two spaces more than build the the name of the job build is and this uses is ended more than that so that 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 white space that indentation is important in yaml it's very important you'll get syntax errors if you don't indent properly all right so what we're going to do is uh this is the name of a job right here i'm going to change this. it's not going to be called job it'll be called or build it'll be called job one that sounds good to me uh you tell it where it's going to run on there's a name value pair so runs on Ubuntu latest, that's fine. Um, if you had something special that had to run on Windows or a particular version of Linux, you want to put that on there. Um, and then within that job, we're going to have steps. And I don't really care about that right here. I want to keep this as simple as possible. So I like this right here. It's a really simple thing. Run a one line script, echo hello world. I want echo hello world. I'll say echo uh, job one step one right here and then it looks like there's a second step here with a multi-line script I, I like that i'll keep that in there so echo i'll say um job one step two and then job one step two comma uh second line just really simple like this OK, and why don't I create a second job that does something really similar, just to indicate that you can have multiple jobs. I have to give it a second name. Squiggly line tells me you can't do that. And uh, I'll get rid of some of these comments here. And this one, this is job two, step one, right there. All right, so I've got a couple of jobs right here. This job has two steps. This job has one step and they will be triggered by workflow dispatch meaning that they're going to be triggered manually 
Let me commit those changes. I'll call this. Uh, well, this is just a commit message right here. And so here's my workflow right here. It's called blank.yaml. I actually don't like that name, blank.yaml. Why don't I rename it to edit this file? I'll rename it to not blank.yaml, but gcast simple.yaml and commit those changes. And there we go right here. And now if I go back to the actions tab, I'll see that there's my GCAS simple workflow. I can click on it. And because I made did this uh, uh, workflow dispatch, I have this button right here that says run workflow. So I can manually trigger it. I'm going to do that right now. Click run workflow on the main branch, run workflow. And now it shows up in here and you can see that it is queued. It's getting up that uh, Ubuntu latest virtual machine. It'll run on that, it's spinning up a container to run on. And now it's actually running and it's done. It was really fascinating. It just echoed some things out. If we want to see the results of it, then I can click on this right here. And you can see there's my two jobs, job one and job two. And I can drill down into job one and actually see there are the steps, one line script, multi line script. If I expand the steps, I'll see any output. This one, all it has is output, just echoed out some stuff right here. And there's the completed job right here. So if I, um, if there's an error that would, that would be listed in here, and I'd be able to troubleshoot that based on the error information. Here's job two right here. It only had one step, and it echoed this out right here. Now that I have a job, I may want to change it. And the way that I change it is by editing the YAML file. The YAML file after it's created is actually checked into my source code repository. It's in this GitHub slash workflows folder right here. There it is, there's my YAML file. I can open that up. And of course you could uh, edit this locally and push it up using git commands, uh, however you wanna do it. But you can also, for this purposes, I'm just gonna ed edit it directly in the browser right here. So there's the YAML that I created, and I can change this and commit to those changes directly into the main branch. Probably not great for application lifecycle, but good for this demo. And what I wanna do is I wanna say that this job two, it has these steps, it runs on Ubuntu latest, but I wanna add another line here that says needs job one. And what that this tells me is that when we first last ran the job, these two jobs ran in parallel. Job one and job two ran simultaneously. But sometimes that's not appropriate. There may be something in here that requires this first job to finish before the second job starts. In this case, not, the, not true, but you can imagine that maybe this creates a file and that uses the file. That, that might be a, a good reason to have this dependency. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just commit this change, add this one line right here and commit that here and now when i go back to my actions tab open up that workflow then i can run the job again oops let me go back to here this workflow here i can run the workflow by clicking this button right here run workflow run workflow and i should see in a second it get queued up for the second run there it is, it's queued up, and then it'll start running. This might take a little bit longer because they're not running in parallel. Now it's in progress. Now the second job is queued. And it still shouldn't take long. All it is doing is echoing out some things. Second job is in progress, and it's done. Yeah, it did take that one took five seconds longer than that one. So if I open this up, what you'll see is that dependency is indicated by this line right here job one has to run first job two has to run second and you can see if we drill down into the same thing the output of the two steps of job one and the output of the one step of job two so now we've established a dependency these things are running in serial rather than in parallel in this video i've shown you how to create a simple github action and to go back and edit that action this is david Thank you for watching. Yeah.